Greetings and welcome back to the Kiss My Aesthetic Podcast. I'm really excited for today's solo episode. It is going to be a juicy one. It is going to be the episode I'm probably going to send to every potential client that comes our way um, because this is really the step one. This is step 1A of working with our team, which is brand strategy. And as we've grown and as we've evolved as a brand design and social media marketing agency, we've learned that we cannot do anything visual without a strategy. So this episode is going to run you through what happens in a brand strategy session, what we're after, the kind of follow-up questions that we're going to ask, and how we implement the strategy to inform the visuals that we design. So without further ado, let's get into it. As you guys know, I talk very fast. So if you got to slow it down, if you got to do it at 0.5 speed, if you got to find a way to, you know, get all the information out of this, um, would definitely recommend that you maybe hit that uh, speed button and listen to it in a slower pace. But I also know a lot of you are busy entrepreneurs and you're on the go and you appreciate the volume of information at the speed at which it comes at you. So we're going to go for it. So in this episode, I want to break down for you what brand strategy actually is and why it's really, really crucial for your business, especially if you're in that like three to five year mark where you're encroaching on a rebrand. Maybe you're getting beyond a DIY or that you have branding existing that's not serving you or where you want to go. Strategy is going to be paramount importance. So making sure you understand what strategy is, why it's crucial for your business. Um, We're also going to talk through understanding Brad's brand strategy, the foundation of a strong brand strategy, how to develop your brand's personality, consistency, and experience, and then how you actually measure the success of your strategy, right? What metrics, what feedback, which ways can we start to um, measure the ROI of this type of effort, right? I'll also hit on some common maybe pitfalls, how to avoid them for strategy. And then we'll kind of wrap this thing all up in a nice bow. As you guys know, when I record solo episodes, I also go live on TikTok. So if you're watching this on TikTok right now and you have a question or you want to shoot your shot and get some advice from me, please do so um, in the comments and we'll hit that at the end of the episode. So that's just your reminder. But back up to the top, brand strategy. So as you guys have listened and watched and evolved with me on this journey of entrepreneurship, you know that our brand strategy has always been an integral part of our process. And that strategy before calling it strategy was simply the brand questionnaire. So in all of my time of doing this since 2014, The brand questionnaire is really the very first kickoff of someone's project. They get their onboarding, they're in Basecamp. The first piece of work that they are doing is filling out a brand questionnaire. It's six pages. It's a Google Doc. It's super long. It's very involved. And the thing I always tell the client is there are questions for every single question in the brand questionnaire that I have as a follow-up. So that's really just the kickstart. But believe me, by the time we're into your strategy session, there are a whole bunch of extra questions that I have to ask to make sure I'm getting the correct information to then direct my team on how we're going to deliver on those goals, right? So if you don't have a brand questionnaire as part of your process and you're listening to this as a designer, you need it. If you're listening to this as a potential client, that is your first piece of homework. It is the biggest piece of homework and it is setting the foundation for the rest of the brand. So that's where I need your your top of your A game, put in all the best information so that we can ask the correct follow-up and really get your project off to a great start. So understanding brand strategy from a 30,000 foot view um, really means that we need the roadmap, right? We need the recipe. And so what we're doing in that session is we're sitting down to get all the ingredients, gather all the information so we can start building the recipe for what the rest of the stuff is going to look like. So a lot of those questions about brand strategy cover more than just aesthetic. We're talking about mission statement. We're talking about vision statement. We're talking about ideal client. We're talking about goals. We're talking about revenue. We're talking about scale plans. We're talking about go-to-market strategy. There are so many things baked into this that will then indicate how we are going to take your brand into a visual direction, right? So the strategy itself, as far as our process goes, working with MKW Creative Co. is now broken off from branding. So when we're on the discovery call with someone, if we feel like they're not super, super locked in on their strategy yet, we will recommend that we actually start with branding strategy before we ever 
quote out branding because we need to get that information locked and loaded. And it's because that is absolutely crucial for our success on the visual side of things. So now that's a separate service. You can also hit us up if you just want a strategy service. If you just want to say, hey, I feel pretty good about my visuals. Michelle and team, can you guys just help me with my brand strategy? Um, so freaking lootly. You can fill that out. It's on our website, mkwcreative.co um, slash contact. You can put in all your information just right in there that you're interested in brand strategy. That's available to you. That's the little plug, right? But there's a big difference between brand strategy and marketing strategy. Your brand strategy is your omnipresence of your company, of the thing that you sell or the service that you provide, right? So that's how does this brand, this organism, this being exist in all the places that it touches, right? For all the Disney kids, that's like the Simba analogy where Mufasa takes Simba out to the edge of Pride Rock and says, everywhere the light touches shall be yours. That's what we want to think about for your brand strategy, which is different than a marketing strategy. A marketing strategy is these are the things we're going to do to achieve this very specific measurable goal on behalf of the brand. So two different things. You can have a marketing strategy for a product. You can have a marketing strategy for a course or a workshop or a whatever, but that's not a brand strategy, right? So there's a pretty clear difference. There's also a difference between brand identity and brand strategy. Good brand identity is rooted in strategy, right? So just like a good meal is based on a good recipe or a good set of ingredients. We have to have the strategy in place to make the thing that is actually gets presented to the client make sense, right? So that's your logo, your color scheme, your typography, your photography styles, all that good juicy stuff we talk about with branding. That's the brand identity. It is not synonymous with brand strategy. Brand strategy is all the pre-work, all the pre-production, all the research and development, all the recipe testing that's going into that meal. Does that make sense? A little complicated, but very easy to confuse, right? And we talk about how in our industry, in marketing in general, like a lot of branding terminology is used interchangeably when it shouldn't be, right? Like people will often confuse, oh, I need a new logo when really they're asking for a brand, or I need a new um, website when they actually need a new strategy, right? Or they need a new, I want new social graphics when they're really talking about new visual identity, right? So there's a lot of things that get kind of conflated and mixed around. So if this is the first time you're hearing this, no worries, right? But the brand identity is separate from strategy. And that's why we always, 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 always need to start with strategy. To build the foundation of a strong brand strategy, we have to define what the heck it is. You guys have been listening to this podcast long enough. You know, the first question I ask everyone is, who are you? What do you do? Who do you help and how, right? That is a mission statement. That is literally the formula for your mission statement. Who you are, what you do, who you help, how you help them. And if you filled out the contact form on our website, you saw that this is one of our questions. And hot tip, if you're thinking about working with us in the future, the more perfectly you answer the mission statement prompt to that recipe, definitely gets you some brownie points in our selection process because I write in the contact form exactly the recipe for how we love to see a mission statement, which is who you are, what you do, who you help, how you help them. Because your mission statement should function like the sentence that someone says about you when you're not in the room, right? If your best friend or your neighbor or your colleague or your little sister is talking to somebody and they, they're they looking for the service or the products that you provide, what is that one sentence that they will say that will convince the other person that you're the one for the job or that you have the stuff that they're looking for, right? So for us, MKW Creative Co. builds bragworthy brands for social media-minded entrepreneurs through brand design, social media marketing, and brand presence, for example, visual brand presence. So that's encapsulating who we are, MKW Creative Co. Bragworthy brand design is what we provide. Social media-minded entrepreneurs, meaning they're going to be building community, right? They're going to be building community through social media. That's a very common theme with everyone that we work with. We don't really work with a ton of businesses that aren't planning to leverage social media. And then how we do it, visual identity design, visual presence, right? Mission statement. Your vision statement is different. Your vision statement are the hoorahs. These are the things that really get people fired up to work with you. These are the sentences where someone reads them or hears them or says them and they feel just so aligned, like absolutely magnetically, like these are my girls. Like I know that in my soul, I agree with this and I agree with their ethics and their morals and what they're bringing to the table, 
right? So those are vision, mission, vision, very important. We actually ask those in the contact form, not even in the brand discovery, not even in the strategy session. We talk about that in the contact form. So it's also in the brand questionnaire. And when it is in the brand questionnaire and it's not answered to that recipe, that's my first thing that I'm going to zero in on. I'm going to say, hey, we wrote you the little recipe for how we like to see mission and vision. Let's work on that. Let's let's massage this. Let's take what you've written that's seven sentences long and make it one. That's very easy to repeat, very easy to remember. And then we can talk about the vision. We believe, we know, we feel, we've learned, right? Those are vision statements. Your vision is how you think that the world should be and how your product or your service is the solution to somebody else's problem. That's vision, not mission, right? Also important in the foundation is understanding and defining the target audience. If someone says, my target audience is everyone, eh, no, wrong answer. Wrong answer. You cannot. Your, your target audience cannot physically, possibly, statistically be everyone. So we're really going to talk about who you like to work for the best, why you like to work for them, what you're solving for them, what is the center of the Venn diagram of everyone that's in your universe, right? What are people coming to you for help for? That's the stuff that will get you to the ideal client, to the understanding the target audience. Because the other example I'll give is if you came to me and you say, I have a fitness studio. And I say, great, that's awesome. You have a fitness studio. Who comes to your fitness studio? And you say, um, moms between the age of 30 and 50, they drink almond milk lattes and they um, wear... Vori and Athleta and Lululemon. That's one example. And if I say, I own a fitness studio, I work with mostly men who drive muscle cars and have tattoos. The branding for those two fitness studios should look different from each other. This is an oversimplified, reductive example, but we have to ask that question. Which one are you targeting, right? Are you targeting moms that want to do, you know, guess we can guess what kind of workout they're doing just based on the the target audience, drinking almond milk lattes, driving Mercedes, wearing Lululemon matching sets is very different than guys drinking pre-workout and have tattoos and driving muscle cars. Those are two different people. And we can start to guess what type of fitness studio they go to based on just the target audience alone, right? This one over here, probably Pilates, yoga, low intensity, very social, very community-based, high price point. The other one, the guys, motorcycles, tattoos, pre-workout, CrossFit gym. That's where my brain's going. So knowing the ideal client and knowing the target audience is going to tell us so much about who we need to design for, right? Because there's a reason that each of those audiences look different from each other because they want different things out of that fitness studio. So transpose that to your own brand, figure out who am I trying to attract? What would be the symbols or, or signifiers or language that would show that person that they belong here? Because ultimately at the end of the day, branding and all business in general is about helping people feel seen and helping people feel heard, right? People want to be seen and they want to be heard. So they want to be seen. They want to be heard. They also, I would say, want to belong. That would be the third the third criteria, right? So you want the person that's the perfect fit who will get the most out of what you have to provide. You want them to find your stuff and feel like, oh my gosh, where have you been my whole life? This is exactly what I need. So That's what we can think about when we're talking about the understanding and defining your target audience. The other foundation element that's really important here is the importance of your brand positioning and finding your unique value proposition. So your brand positioning refers to where do you fit in in the landscape of everyone else that's offering what you offer, right? So where do you stand amongst the crowd? And this is kind of a love-hate relationship for me um, because I'm a big fan of put your blinders on, do you, like don't pay attention to your competitors. But when you are in this inflection stage where you're trying to re-strategize, it is so important that we at least take a look at what else exists in the market to figure out where you have the most runway, right? So if you do a study of your five biggest competitors and you realize that they are all using dark green as their branding color, then maybe, just maybe, you should go for red. Just so you have that little bit of runway that says, oh yeah, we all offer the same thing, but look, me over here, different than those guys. I've got something else going on, you know? As long as it fits the brand, right? So that's just one example. The other reason why you wanna do positioning research and competitor research is to figure out where your secret sauce is, right? What's something that you know how to do in your sleep or you know how to provide or that the, the value that your product brings to the table that is not existing in your landscape, right? 
So um, maybe you're food and bev, and maybe you are sourcing from, um, you know, a really tiny, obscure, unique farm that nobody knows about that really makes your product proprietary. That's something that needs to come up in the strategy session, right? Figuring out your brand positioning, because that's what's telling us your unique value proposition or your USP, your unique sales proposition. That's saying people that care about this thing that I care about will care deeply about this very, very, very specific thing that I do that nobody else does, right? And it's hard. And especially if you're in this place of reflection and re-strategizing and trying to figure out, okay, who am I and what is this and where are we going and blah, 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 blah. All of that can feel really overwhelming, but that's why you would work with someone like our team just to help you see where your unique value proposition is, where your USP is, right? But we that comes about once we start looking at your target audience, starting to understand them, starting to understand your mission, your vision, your why. All of that purpose work is all part of the brand foundation. And all of that is so, 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 so important in how we recommend strategies to you because that's going to get us closer to your goal, right? So I think the next bit of it before we go into personality and experience and brand strategy success is in this foundation section and, and development section, we have to figure out your goals. Go back, listen to a few podcast episodes before where we talk about the difference between a legacy and a lifestyle company. Are you working so that you can support a lifestyle that sustains you? Or are you creating a company that's supposed to survive you? Those are really, really, really important questions because that absolutely impacts the way that we recommend your strategy. And those are big, 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 big life questions to ask, right? Those are very overwhelming questions to think about because I think society tells us and our personality types tell us which one we want when that may not be the case, right? Um, We may not want to build a mega company that takes over and acquires all these sub companies and becomes this big, huge thing. You may be totally okay with the fact that when you're all done running this business, it might go away. That's okay. That's okay. You know, so asking yourself those harder questions is super important. And sharing that with us as your design team will help us get you the best strategy possible. Because if you come to that, to that brand strategy session and you say, Michelle, I want to build this company. I want to go balls to the walls and I want to, I want to sell in 15 years. I want an exit plan. Then we are doing it very differently than this is my passion. I want to do this until I cannot work anymore until I, until I make so much money, I can retire. And when I retire, I really don't care if the business exists. That's also a different strategy. There may be overlap, but those are two different strategies, right? So the goals, the purpose, mission, vision, defining your target audience and talking about your brand positioning, all really, really strong foundation stuff that we try to extract from you in 90 minutes. That's our challenge. And it's a good thing I talk fast, guys, because clearly we can get through a lot of stuff just going through those questions only. As we keep going through the strategy process, we also want to talk about the brand personality, the consistency, and the experience, right? Because whether you are a product or a service-based brand, you are providing an experience. Everyone is in the business of helping people, helping them with anything, even chocolate cake. Even if you sell chocolate cake, you're in the, you are in the business of helping people celebrate things. So think about what you are actually in the business in, regardless of, oh, I offer VIP days, or I am a personal trainer, or I sell wine. Like, what are you actually in the business in? What are you in the business of helping people do? That's really important. But your voice and tone comes about with your brand personality. And the voice and tone is just as important to your brand as the visuals, the colors, the font, the logos, the patterns, the merch, the everything. Because your voice and tone tells people how to treat you, right? We talked about this in depth when we talked about threads with Ashley Pollard a few episodes back. So search the Let's Thread episode where we really dove into like, how do you define your voice and tone? How do you create jargon within your audience? How do you create inside jokes and Easter eggs and make people feel like they belong because you get them and you're able to talk to them in a way that they understand? One of the best compliments I ever got back when I was like way more into blog blog writing than I am now was, Michelle, you blog the way you talk. And I thought that was such a huge compliment because I'm like, oh my gosh, thanks. Because I feel like I get lost in translation when I have to write something down. I'm such a verbal processor, right? Like I love to share my voice and tone is right now in your ears, in your speakers, in your car as you're listening to this podcast. That's why the podcast is sustained and the blogging did not. 
because this is the voice and tone. This is my voice. This is my tone. This is everything that I want you to know about me more than just the word, right? So creating a brand story also that connects with your audience in your voice and tone is very, very important in this strategy function of the business, right? So the strategy and the story of who belongs and why they belong and where they belong within your audience so that you can relate to your audience is really important in creating that brand personality. At the end of the day, the the feeling we're going for here is that someone finds you, finds your stuff, finds your product, finds your services, and has that feeling we talked about early in the episode where it's like, oh my gosh, where have you been my whole life? This is exactly what I needed. That's the feeling we're going for. Excited, but not surprised. Excited, but not surprised. I kind of wish with my own personal tagline. I want you to be excited, but I don't want you to be surprised because I want it to feel like such a natural fit that everything's just clicking into place, right? So the other thing we can think about with brand personalities is doing that competitor research to help drive us closer towards the brands that we like their personalities. And a lot of this comes through on social media marketing, but it also comes through in visuals, right? So think about Duolingo is the first example of brand voice and tone that absolutely kills it right? They have their Duolingo bird. They've got that bird that lives in the app, that color green. They have the character version of the bird that is in their TikTok videos, but even down to their replies in the comment section on TikTok are so on brand. It's insane. It's insane. And like the sassy, quippy, quick catch your attention is so synonymous with the Duolingo experience because it creates this buzz and this kind of, you know, flutter to use bird terminology around their brands that makes it memorable, right? Very different than the brand voice and tone of, let's say, like Hermes, right? Hermes is very luxury. It's very high end. It's very exclusive. So if Hermes was all of a sudden showing up on social media sounding like Duolingo, it would kind of not feel like a fit, right? You'd be like, wait a second. I thought you guys were Hermes. Like, why are you making jokes in the comment section and and have a character running around your showroom that just doesn't, it doesn't fit, right? So The voice and tone is what also helps us dictate the marketing, the branding, the aesthetics, and honestly, the storytelling that comes out of your brand. And storytelling is a word that drives me nuts, but it's kind of the only word to use in this instance. Figuring out which personalities we can learn from in a brand landscape will help, right? It definitely helps. After you develop the brand personality, what we're going to dive into after that is a lot more about the consistency and the experience. Just like I said, everyone's in the business of helping people. And there's a way to do that across all of your omnipresence. Remember, we talked about that as the difference between brand strategy versus marketing strategy. Brand strategy is about your omnipresence in all the places, how you show up everywhere. That's your brand. Um, That consistency is really important, right? So if you think about, and I just said this in the episode that we recorded with Morgan, Morgan Drinks Coffee. If you think about your content or you think about your brand as a giant switchboard, there's all these dials and levers and all these different criteria that you can mess with. And if every single day you go in and you say, huh, interesting. I wonder if we just bump this one over here up a little bit. I wonder if we just crank this dial up just a little bit today. You can totally do that. That's totally, totally kosher. You want to play with a different, slightly different color palette. You want to play with a little bit different fonts. You want to try a little bit kind of different messaging. The issue becomes, and the, the the trap that a lot of entrepreneurs fall into is that they try to change all the things at once. They try to say like, boop, boop, beep, bop, beep, dee, dee, like move all the levers, all the dials, all the criteria. And what that does is it creates a lot of chaos for your audience and chaos makes people not trust you. So if you are constantly rolling out new services, new offerings, new branding, new website, new templates, new sales strategies, new products, and there's no consistency, there's just constant change, constant chaos, you're gonna lose people. And that's going to be counterproductive to your goal of attracting the right people into your business. So instead of having so many switches and so many dials, simplify, simplify, just say, you know what, these ones, these are locked and loaded. Hotel Lobby Candle is a perfect example of this, right? Hotel Lobby Candle, branding, always consistent. Shape of the candle, always consistent. Label on the candle, always consistent. That being said, the color palette, the scent note, the styling, the inspiration might be different from candle to candle. But when you see that shape with the square logo, it will 
always, always, always be consistent. So you know which things are locked. Those panels we're not touching. Those dials we're not touching. But look at all the ones we can touch. Look at all the ones we can play with. Look at all the ones we can vary. Make sense? So in your own business, you need to think about what are the things non-negotiable that are locked? What's locked in? What or what are the things we can play with, right? So that's going to help you with your consistency. It's going to help you with your brand presence. And it will help you create some accountability for yourself to stick to some, right? It doesn't mean you should stick to it if it's not working. That's why we talk about it in brand strategy. What are the things that are locked in? What are the things that are variables, right? So getting all of that in this strategy session is really important because that's what helps create a memorable brand experience. Strategies for maintaining that brand integrity and consistency as your business evolves falls more under marketing, right? So the strategies for maintaining all of that, the strategies for keeping all those dials locked or maybe unlocking them every once in a while, those are more marketing strategies. But overall, the brand strategy should be basically designing that switchboard. These are the things that are locked. These are the things that can move around. These are the things that we're going to play with. These are the things we're going to experiment. And then we're going to take all that information and measure it. We have to measure. We have to measure the indicators to track the success of the strategy. So that's the next thing for this year, for 2024, that my team is working on as we're growing more into creative partnership is what are those metrics? What are those indicators that can help us track the success of the rebranding effort? And rebranding is difficult to measure, right? Because you'll never truly have an apples to apples comparison. It'll always be apples to oranges. You either rebranded or you didn't. You will not be able to live two realities in which you could A, B test. We rebranded here and we didn't rebrand over there. It's just not possible. You either rebranded or you didn't rebrand. So It's hard, right? It's hard to measure what would have happened if we didn't do it this way, because that's not part of the space-time continuum. Instead, think about how are we going to measure this success? Is it through customer feedback? Is it through growing our social following? Is it revenue? Is it um, brand presence? Is it an opportunity? Is it that we just feel more aligned and we have higher quality clients coming through? Maybe it's all of those things. But adjusting and evolving your brand strategy based on performance is the only way that you can do it in a way that sustains, right? So a lot of clients come to us and they say, hey, I've DIY'd my branding or I worked with someone that was a little bit more novice because I didn't have the budget. But now I'm at a place where I want to accomplish these things. And I don't feel that what I have is going to get me where I want to go. So the strategy, the goal of the strategy is to look at, well, where do you want to go? And let's write the recipe to get you to that place, right? Let's write the roadmap. Let's write the plan. Let's write the strategy so you can get from where you're at to where you want to go. And that's what strategy is, right? So thinking about how you're going to measure that through testimonials, through feedback, through surveys, through social, through revenue, through opportunities, those are really important metrics because just like people, businesses also evolve and change and grow and scale. So you may be doing this for a 10-year plan, a 15-year plan. But who's to say that in 30 years from now, when we have a totally different suite of social medias and we're all on Web3 instead of Web2, that the strategy that you implemented in 2024 isn't going to be totally outdated and somewhat broken. That's a very real possibility, right? So those are the things to think about when you are in the brand strategy session and you're working through um, your performance, you're working through what's working, you're identifying those indicators, it's really important to have that in the brand strategy so that we are designing for you in a way that's going to get you to your goals. Lastly, some of the things to think about and the common mistakes people make with their brand strategy is not doing one. Like that's the first mistake that comes to mind is like, how, how can we possibly get you good graphic design and good branding and good assets if we don't know how to design it because we don't know your goals. So if you're a designer, again, strategy, very, very important. Calling it strategy, very important. It took me 10 years to learn that lesson. So here's a little cheat code. Have a strategy session before you do branding. Um, But on the client side, the strategy is going to give you also the insurance policy to make sure that the branding is going to turn out the way that you want it and that you've communicated everything you, we could possibly ever need to know to be able to deliver you a high quality branding experience, right? That's what it's really for. Um, some of the strategies to avoid any kind of like pitfalls or things not working out when it comes to strategy is you have to be forthcoming with information. So the, our output is only as good as your input. So if you're not really giving us the whole story or if you're not really painting the right picture about revenue or you're not really being forthcoming about 
your process not working or services that you no longer want to offer, but are part of your offer suite. Like if you're not coming to that strategy with, with full honesty and transparency, we may advise you wrong. That's very possible because our output is only as good as your input. So our team is really big on transparency, honesty, integrity. I would hope that that's baseline for everyone, but it's one of those things that deserves to be said and reminded is that the more you share with us is the better we can help you, essentially. That pretty much covers it. This was a doozy of an episode. Talked about lots of different things within this. So brand consistency, brand personality. We talked about building a good foundation. We talked about understanding what brand strategy is. And I feel like this might be an episode that you're going to have saved somewhere and flagged and sent to 15 different friends. Uh, As I said at the beginning, if you would like to work with us, that opportunity is available to you. Head on over mkwcreative.co slash contact fill out that info form and indicate that you want help with brand strategy because we are around and we are happy to help. If you love this episode and you learned something from it, maybe you're a designer, you're creative, you're an entrepreneur, please share. It means so much to us when you share. um, And it really helps us um, spread our message so we can do more episodes like this. And like I said, I'm happy to tell you pretty much everything I know. Thanks everyone. And we'll catch you next time. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you around. See you online. Bye.